Today I want to take a look at two different absolute value inequality situations. Uh, one that uh, creates a union situation and one that creates an intersection. Um, so for the one that I have here, so we have the absolute value of 2d minus 8 is greater than 12. So the first thing I'm going to, uh, I need knowledge about is what, is what does absolute value mean? Absolute value means the distance from zero. So this expression is greater than 12 places away from zero. So not only are we comparing it to 12, but we also have to compare it to negative 12 because both of those numbers are 12 places away from zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out without the absolute value so that I take care of both cases. So since it's 12 places, I have 2d minus 8 is greater than 12, and I have 2d minus 8 is less than negative 12. So I have 12 and negative 12. Now the other piece is that we are starting with negative 12, and I'm turning, I mean positive 12, and I'm turning it into a negative 12. So whenever I multiply by a negative 1 to go from 12 to negative 12, my symbol, my greater than, also has to reverse into a less than. Okay, so kind of recap there. So we are 12 places away from 0. So two numbers are 12 places away from 0, and that's 12 and negative 12. And since we're multiplying by negative 1 to go from 12 to negative 12, I have to reverse my sign from a greater than to a less than. And then I just solve both inequalities like I would a single inequality. So I add 8 to both sides, and I get 2d is greater than 20. Divide by 2, d is greater than 10. And the other one, I add 8 to both sides. So we have 2d is less than negative 4. Divide by 2, d is less than negative 2. Now, since I have them both solved, the other piece of information I need, I need to know whether it's a union or an intersection. So I look at the inequality at the time that I split the uh, absolute value inequality in the two problems. So right now is where I split it. There's nothing on the abs outside of the absolute value, There's, so the absolute value is isolated. And since we have a greater than symbol, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look at my chart. So if you have an equal sign, so if it's an equation and seven inequality, it's always an or because it, a number can't be equal to two things at once. If I have a greater than, it's equal to an or or a union. Um, if it's a less than, then it's an and statement or an intersection. So the bottom line is unless it's a less than, it's always going to be or. If I have less than or less than or equal to, then it's an and. So everything except for less than is or. Less than's are always and. So in this case, we have a... Or statement. So I'm going to write or in between my two inequalities. Okay, so I have two inequalities because we're dealing with absolute value, and absolute value is distance from zero. I'm 12 places away from zero, so I have 12 and negative 12, and I solve both. Now I got to take care of the graph. So on my graph, I'm going to put a negative 2, a 0, and a 10 would be somewhere up here. So if I graph them individually, I have d is greater than 10, so I start at 10 going to the right. Or d is less than negative 2, so I'm going to the left there. Now, since an or statement, only one or the other has to be true, I'm looking for parts of the graph where I have at least one graph above the number line. So I'm going to kind of cut my graph apart at the points. So if I look to the left of, so over here, to the left of negative 2, do I have at least one graph? Sure, I have this one that goes starts at negative 2 going to the left. So that's going to be part of my solution. Then I look in between the two graphs, so in here, or in between the two points, I mean. In here, do I have at least one red graph there? No, I have nothing. So this cannot be part of my solution. And then I look to the right of the 10. I have at least one graph there, so that's got to be part of my solution. So on my number line, I start at 2 going to the left, and... I start at 10 going to the right, so my solution is d is less than negative 2, or d is greater than positive 10. Now, that was an or statement, so or is a union of two data sets. Okay, so since I took a look at a, a union, I also want to take, care, take a look at an intersection. So for this one, we're going to take a look at... 5d plus 5, with the absolute value of 5d plus 5, is less than 
20. So in this particular problem, the absolute value part is already isolated. I don't have any numbers on the outside of the absolute value. So I have to then split it apart into two separate inequalities. I have to deal with the distance from 0 of 20. So the absolute value, or the expression 5d plus 5, is less than 20 places away from 0. So I have to take care of both of those. So I have 5, let me get a different color. So we have 5d plus 5 is less than 20. And I have 5d plus 5. So I never change what's in the absolute value, because absolute value doesn't mean turn things to positive or turn things to negative. It simply means distance from 0. Um, so I have 20 places away from 0 in my first one, so the next, next one's going to be negative 20. And again, since I'm going from positive 20 to negative 20, my symbol is going to reverse from less than to a greater than. And now I'm dealing with a less than. We said before, if we have an equation that's an equals, or we have a greater than or greater than or equal to, it's, those are all going to be or statements. Well, this one is a less than, so a less than is an intersection, so it's a and statement because it's a intersection. Okay, so we put and in between those two um, inequalities. And then I'm just going to go ahead and solve them out. So I subtract 5. So we have 5d is less than 15. Divide by 5, d is less than 3. Over here we subtract 5. So 5d is greater than negative 25. And d is now greater than negative 5. So we have, again, we have an and statement. So we're looking for the intersection of those two areas. Now, in the previous example, when we were looking at the graphs, we were looking for anywhere we have at least one graph. Well, if it's intersection, I need both graphs because they have to overlap each other. They both have to be true. So I'm going to create another graph here. I'm going to start at negative 5, put a 0, put a positive 5, and then 3 would be somewhere around there. Okay, so if I graph them individually, less than 3 goes this way. Greater than negative 5 goes that way. So the question is, where are the intersects? So just like the previous problem, I'm going to cut them apart at the two points. And I'm going to look to see where the graphs overlap. Where do I have two graphs? So I'm going to start to the left of negative 5, so down here. Okay, do I have two red graphs down there? I do not. I only have one. So it can't be part of my solution set. Then I look in between the two points. There I have two graphs, so that's got to be part of my answer. And then I look to the right of 3. I only have one graph there, so that can't be part of my solution. So my solution, I have open points on negative 5 and 3, and it's everything in between those two numbers. So my final inequality would be x is in between negative 5 and 3, and I always start with the smaller one and go to the bigger one. So x is in between negative 5 and 3. 3 is the very biggest number in my inequality. And if we remember back to like middle school, elementary school, when you first started learning inequalities, we had our alligator. The alligator always wants to be open towards the bigger number. So 3 is the very biggest number in my inequality. So it's going to, they're both going to be open towards the 3. They're both open points, so I don't put equal signs. And that's my final solution. Negative 5 is less than x, which is less than positive 3.